uh, today I'm going to be making the bread video. Um, excuse that. And uh, what I'm doing at the moment is just uh, getting the, the fire up to temperature and getting a nice bed of embers in there um, because you, are, you need a nice hot fire and let it die right down. So you've got like a really glowing red base to it. Ideally, is that that's the ideal way to uh, bake bread out, outside. I'm um, using a Dutch oven today um, and hopefully at some point uh, I'll try and do a bannock as the the, the, the uh, loaf in the oven is uh, baking. Um, but uh, we'll have to see what, well, shouldn't take any more time so it should be okay. Um, right, so what I'm doing now as well is uh, while the, the fire's getting right to the right temperature I'm warming the Dutch oven up. Um, everything needs to be quite warm for bread to uh, to, to work, to rise properly, to, for the yeast to activate itself. So um, there's not too much breeze today, so hopefully we shouldn't have too much of a problem with that. Um, I've made a, a quick tripod, wooden tripod there, um, because that, that, that's always handy when you're baking bread. I mean, you can do it without, but it's a lot more hassle. Um, okay, so while that's warming up as well, I'll need to get some water on the go. best to do about, well, somewhere between half a litre and a litre of water just to uh, just to make sure you've got enough. I mean, you'll be using half a litre or 500 millilitres, so that's, that's about a litre there. So we'll get the lid back on there. Now the uh, the water doesn't have to be boiling. Uh, in fact, it's it's bad if it's boiling because that means it's too hot. But um, you can always add a bit of cold water to it to just to bring the temperature down a little bit so it's warm. Um, and while that's doing, I'll just run through quickly what we've got. Now it's going to be a healthy or healthier bread. So <coughs> um, we're going to be using demerara sugar instead of. Uh, normal white sugar and uh, for the for the um, just make sure that's aiming the right way yeah for the uh, for the the uh, flour itself I'm going to be using wholemeal flour and uh, instead of using quite as much sugar as well I'm going to use put some raisins in there as well so it's a little bit more substantial um, wholemeal is generally better than, than white bread or white flour because it's got slower release carbs in it. White, white flour is, is higher, uh, faster release carbs <coughs> so you don't really get the benefit of it. And because bread's quite filling as well you tend not to eat the, the other stuff that you need when you're eating bread anyway, no matter whether it's white or wholemeal. So you really need to, to make sure you get the best you can from the bread. Um, if you're only out for a few days and you're at a permanent camp, then it's not too serious. But long term, it's always better to to to, to uh, cover all your bases, so to speak. Right. Okay. So uh, now, what we need to do is because uh, I believe the. Uh, Too warm at the moment, but uh, that's all right. In there.
should be all right. Yeah. Just let that uh, warm the bowl through. Right, <coughs> yeast mix. Now, where are those? I need to add one sachet of yeast. I think we've got it. we've gotten into it nearly. Now they normally have uh, an easy tear opening on them, but uh, this one must have decided it's not going to work. in the water if you like. So it goes all cloudy. And to this we need to add a spoonful of sugar in this water. Two if you're not using raisins, but one if you're using raisins. Okay, we'll just get this uh, sort of mixed up a little bit. You don't have to use sugar, it just uh, sweetens things up a little bit and helps the uh, helps the uh, yeast to uh, mix a little bit better. The sh sugar in there. Right. Now we want that to uh, start doing its business of uh, activating. There. Pour this water back into that. Right, so now we need to put all the flour into the bowl. Now, this is a, I think it's a one and a half kilo bag, yeah, one and a half kilo bag of flour. very aerated at the moment. What I like to do is take out about four, four or five cups worth of flour. Maybe even more. Because I've always found that you need to add loads more water to the mix. So but this way, save you having to try and make up some more uh, yeast mix or warm water, then uh, you shall uh, just mix it like so. Just aerate it a little bit. So it needs a bit of air in, in it to uh, get it to work properly. So fluff it up a little bit so there's no big chunks. That can get very messy so uh, be warned you may get covered in white powder. Just help that 
going right now. Yeast brew should have had a bit of time to uh, do its thing. So you add that to the mix, and uh, to start with, you just want to mix it in with your spoon because it's going to be way too soggy to uh, use your hands at the moment. I mean, you could, but you'll end up with really messy hands. So. Probably at the right sort of stage to uh, get stuck in now. I'll tell you what, I nearly forgot. Is in with this. I need to add a couple of spoonfuls of milk powder. And get the back open. Spoonful of sugar, mix it all up again. And also, you um, if you want the bread to last more than a day or more than a half a day, whatever it is that's uh, before it starts going a little bit stale, you can add salt into it. But uh, and a little bit of salt is good for you. So may add a bit. Into this as well. Just a pinch, that'll do. Or now, rather, we can add some raisins. I've got a couple of, uh, a couple of handfuls of raisins in. And it's not rocket science at the end of the day. So the texture on the surface, you want it to feel like a mushroom. Like when you're touching a field mushroom or a, any mushroom that you uh, buy from the shops or whatever. That should be alright. Slightly clammy texture to it. Uh, right, now oil. The Dutch oven. Using uh, extra virgin olive oil with mine, but uh, you can use pretty much whatever oil you prefer. Don't forget the lid, because when it rises, it's got a habit of touching the lid. <coughs> so we need to transfer that into our Dutch oven. You want this quite high up on the tripod. Where it is there. And now we need to build the fire up a little bit. You see that? Yeah, I wish that you could see that. Right, and uh, once the fire's built up a little bit more, <coughs> you want to leave that, as I say, nice and high above it. So it's not really, really hot, but it's nice and warm. Um, and then you want to leave that in there for about 45 minutes, maybe an hour, um, before you check on it. You don't want to open the lid before it's, it's done its bit, because you, uh, or before 45 minutes, because uh, cold air will get in and it'll, it'll probably, it'll can sort of wreck the rising of it. Um, but it needs to be nice and warm up there. Um, so you probably hold your hand there, and if you can hold it there, in, well, indefinitely, really. Um, it wants to feel warm to your hand, or 
not so hot that you can you can't hold your hand there. So uh, actually, while that's um, that's doing, I, I'll go through the uh, the Bannock bread mix with you. Now this is really straightforward. This one, um, what you want to use something to cook it or bake it on in whatever. Um, I use a uh, the, well the insert out of a um, out of a zebra belly can, um, or you can put it on a flat hot rock or uh, carve a board or wrap it round a stick and just toast it over the fire like uh, roasted marshmallows. Right, um, so with this one. Really, really simple, and the principle is three, two, one. So what you need is three, whatever of the flour. So that can be three handfuls. Um, one, two, three. Three handfuls of flour. Two handfuls of milk powder one two and one teaspoon of baking powder or self-raising flour so it's about a teaspoon there roughly it doesn't have to be perfectly accurate and again just a handful of bread reasons if you like. Fire's doing okay over there. Aerate that a little bit, put like still there. And again you can put salt in if you want, you don't have to. It's uh, completely up to you. Now what you want to do is gradually add water. It should be less than a cup, really. And it doesn't have to be, uh, it's alright, it's not exploding on me, that was the, uh, the bottom of the uh, pan just popping up where I've been kneading on it. Uh, it doesn't have to have any yeast mix in it, because it's an unleavened bread. Which, so, uh, so again, you can do this straight with your hands if you want to, it's just a little bit more messy. So that was about half a cup of water in there so far. But uh, you can pretty much judge for yourself when it's uh, when it's got enough water in. So if it needs to stick together, but not stick to your hands, if that makes sense. Too much water in that, but that's not a problem. Make up as much as you want of this, but uh, this should be enough for uh, filling a large zebra insert. Now, what you want to do is flatten it out, but make it to a ball first, 
flatten it out so that it's no more than, I don't know, three quarters of an inch thick. If it's too thick, it won't bake all the way through. And tell you what, you can oil the bottom of your pan first as well. Just do uh, dropping oil now. Just to uh, make sure it will lessen the chances of it sticking. Right, so you can flatten that out quite a bit. And uh, you just need to uh, prop that up near the fire. So uh, need something to uh, prop it against. And for this, we can use the uh, separate really. So if you find it's not cooking um, or baking, rather, then move it a little bit closer. And if it seems like it's getting brown really quickly, move it further away. It's really simple, um, and that's all there is really. Uh, once it seems lightly browned on one side, flip it over, put it back in, and do the other side. Uh, and, or it's possible that it can do all the way through in one go. It's, it tends to go a little bit darker on the face, but see what you think. Give it a try and uh, we, shall, we shall see, really, or you shall see, <laughs> whichever. Right, okay, so I'm going to turn the camera off and save some of the uh, memory card mi minutes. Uh, I could do with stoking up the fire a little bit more, actually, as well. So uh, I shall join you in a moment when the, uh, the bread has risen. Right, it's had about um, about an hour on there, and uh, the, uh, the damper is nearly done. So it's it's drier than it was, but uh, it's not it's not got that hollow sound to it yet. So we'll uh, I'm not trying to cook it too fast or bake it too fast. Right now, the uh, loaf has uh, filled out quite a bit there compared to what it was. Um, it's not getting quite the heat on the top that I was expecting, but there is a slight breeze and it's not the warmest of days, so I think the uh, the heat's getting taken away from the top while it's heating the bottom. So, but that's that's risen enough for me. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, going to start cooking it or baking it now. And uh, so we need it a little bit closer to the fire and uh, try and get some uh, coals on top of it. So I shall find some sticks and uh, get some coals on there. And I'll put the uh, camera back up there. Try and try it. Zoom in a little bit so you can sort of get a rough idea what's going on. Right, and uh, the coals basically just to, to heat the top, which is not what it's getting at the moment. Um, so that the, the heat, so it doesn't just burn the bottom, it heats evenly all over. Because um, cast iron is good at storing heat, but it's not very good at distributing heat. So uh, we'll get that on, and uh, as I say, lower it close to the fire, a little bit closer. And that's going to take another 45 minutes to an hour for that. So uh, I shall do that now and uh, get back to you once both of these are done. Right, what I've done now is, um, because I just checked it after three quarters of an hour and the top still isn't really cooking or baking as well as it should be. Um, so I've transferred as much of the coals um, onto the top and lowered the Dutch oven right down so it's almost touching the... Uh, the embers, the bed of embers at the bottom, so there's no flames under there at all at the moment. It's just the heat that was stored in it, so it should only need, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes really more to um, to do. So uh, that just stops uh, wasting firewood really, and uh, it's a nice steady heat as well from those. It's not going to change about while well, the flames are jumping up and dying down, etc. So uh, hopefully in 15 to 20 minutes I shall be able to open it up and show you the loaf. Okay, I've uh, doused the, uh, the the remains of the fire, the embers, and uh, cleared up a little bit. There's a stream over there, so uh, and as usual, the uh, the fire dogs once they've been soaked, uh, you stand them up in a, the buttress of a tree, um, 
opposite way round so you've got the top, bottom, uh, top, then bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom so that they, uh, there's less chance of any fires happening. I mean they've been soaked once already so uh, shouldn't do but that just uh, keeps them there in case anyone comes along and needs a fire in the future it's a lot easier to use parts that are nearly burnt anyway and uh, I leave my tripod here as well um, so this see they don't last forever wooden tripods so when it starts getting uh, well I used this last time I was here and it's still alright at the moment but uh, when it gets too dry it'll burn fairly easily so uh, we shall leave that there for next time and uh, this is the, the damper bread in there uh, which is done that's nice nice and dry sound to that now so that's all right to uh, to go so that's that one done and the bread it's still a little bit warm so is uh, you can smell it's done but uh, it's a bit harder to see it's done from there. Um, I'm trying to I'll put the lid over there on the billy. Now the way to test bread, to see if it's done, is you get a clean stick, which I don't have with me. Um, go over to the pack and get a wooden spoon, which I should have in here somewhere. Give me a second. Well, that's good enough for now. Right, so uh, to test the bread, so it could do with being a longer, thinner stick than this, but uh, just to demonstrate, to test the bread is cooked, you push it into the middle, so that's gone all the way down, and if it comes out clean, like that has, oh, I'm a little bit, oh, I've hit a raisin on that side, that's why, but uh, if it comes out clean, nothing stuck to that then the uh, the loaf is cooked so I should put the lid back on still quite hot so I shall need to stick again and uh, that is ready to well you leave it on the side to cool for a bit you normally take it out of the Dutch oven and then uh, lay a cloth over it such as a, a scarf or a schmag or a tea towel if you happen to have a tea towel with you and uh, that just stops it drying out too quickly as it's cooling because it will the moisture in the bread will evaporate off so uh, the cloth just helps stop that but uh, as I'm heading home with this I'm going to leave it in the Dutch oven so it'll keep warming it through I mean it's not going to burn it or anything now now that it's uh, off the fire and it's cooling down it's just residual heat in there at the moment so uh, I'll take that back home and uh, devour it at my pleasure so to speak okay so I, I hope that's been of some use to you um, obviously it goes a lot easier if you use um, self-raising flour like white flour or something like that but um, this is as I said this is a healthier bread version and it's also a lot easier in the summer as well when everything's nice and warm anyway um, when it's the January or the winter or autumn whatever like it is now the everything being slightly cold reduces the chance of it rising so much and cooking as fast and you've got to mess around with the heat like lowering it closer to the fire and lifting it up all the time so um but i hope that's been of use to you anyway so uh, 